Today I am travelling to Scotland's highest village. To most people's surprise, Scotland's highest village is not located in the Scottish Highlands. In Scotland it's also really common to be driving along and you see sheep or cows on the road. Situated at an elevation of 467 metres above sea level and home to around 150 people, Wanlock Head, Scotland's highest village, is located in southern Scotland. With a fascinating history and accessible by one of the most beautiful roads I've ever driven on, this area of Scotland is often overlooked by visitors as they head to other popular destinations like Edinburgh or the Scottish Highlands. Join me as I explore this lesser discovered part of Scotland and make my way to Scotland's highest village. My campervan Ernie has passed its annual MOT and I've been working on a few campervan DIY projects over the last few weeks. The van is now fully set up for working and living in and I'm ready to hit the road and explore more of my home country of Scotland. Wanlock Head, Scotland's highest village, is located around an hour from Glasgow and the English border. Even though it's not far from Glasgow, I'm curious to see if Scotland's highest village will feel a world away from the busy and convenient life of Scotland's biggest city. Wanlock Head is accessible by three different roads and I'll be taking the route through the Menach Pass, a picturesque mountain road which winds its way through the southern uplands. Scotland is really famous for castles and one of the most spectacular castles in southern Scotland is called Drumlanrig Castle. It's located on the way to Scotland's highest village so I'll go past and have a look. I don't think I'll go in today because I believe you cannot film or take photos inside but I'll show you what it looks like from the outside. It's very impressive and then we'll head on to Scotland's highest village. Drumlanrig Castle in Dumfries and Galloway is a historic fortress known for its architectural beauty and scenic grounds. Built in the late 17th century, it offers guided castle tours from April to October which cost £18 for adults. While parts of the castle are occupied by the Buccleuch family, public areas are accessible, allowing visitors to appreciate its well-preserved interiors and the extensive collection of artwork and antiques. So. I'm in the rain but you can see Drumlanrig Castle behind me there. If you do want to go on a tour it's recommended to book in advance. All the next few tours this afternoon are fully booked and you're also not able to take any photos or videos inside. I did check with the man at reception uh, but if you're in the area I definitely recommend to check out the beautiful Drumlanrig Castle behind me and also the gardens and grounds. So the sun has finally come out. It has been so crazy today. One moment raining, one moment sunny, um, but finally the sun is out. So I've just entered the Menach Pass. So I turned off at a place called Menach and I will drive along here and then reach Wanlock Head, the highest village in Scotland. So I think we're about to enter into the scenic part of the drive here. Behind me is a cattle grid. So this is a really popular site in Scotland. Do you have cattle grids in your country? Please let me know in the comments. So in Scotland, when you're driving around, you'll often see cattle grids, especially in the countryside areas. So farmers will put them to stop cattle or sheep escaping from the field. And it means that there doesn't need to be a gate for you to open and close when you're driving through, which is really good. So. And as you can see over there, there are some sheep in the field. So this cattle grid will be stopping them from escaping from the field. In Scotland, it's also really common to be driving along and you see sheep or cows on the road. More common, it's usually sheep that you'll see, but you just need to be careful not to run them over. But usually they get out of the way when you're driving. Okay, so we haven't started gaining any elevation yet. Okay, across the cattle grid, here we go. Now it's July and the lambs are really big. They're basically sheep now. Oh, it's so beautiful already here. This place is so beautiful. I'm so excited to continue driving along. I'm going to go and have a look at the sheep over there. See if they want to be friends. The Menach Pass, located in the picturesque Scottish countryside, is a beautiful mountain road that winds its way through the southern uplands. This breathtaking pass, steeped in history and natural beauty, offers an amazing journey for those seeking adventure and a glimpse into Scotland's rugged charm. With its narrow road, dramatic elevation changes and sweeping views of rolling hills and meandering streams, the pass holds stories of ancient clans, folklore and the resilience of those who traversed its challenging terrain throughout the ages.
While I'm taking in these beautiful views, it's time to say thank you to today's video sponsor, Surfshark. If you haven't heard of Surfshark, they are a VPN company that keep your private and important information safe. When you connect to one of their servers, all your private information, such as your location and IP address, are protected by the Surfshark servers. You can also use Surfshark Alert and get notifications when your passwords or card details are leaked, and then you can act fast to make sure nothing happens. Surfshark's app is super easy to download and use. You can connect to one of their 3,200 servers in over 100 countries, and that's you in the safe zone. You can use one subscription on many devices, so your tablet, laptop, and phone can all join the security party. Also, by changing your online location, you can find better deals for flights and accommodation prices. Surfshark not only keeps you safe, but it can also save you money on your travel. I enjoy traveling in my van and exploring new destinations, but using public Wi-Fi has always made me a bit nervous. There was one incident a few years ago when a thief got hold of my credit card details and went on an online shopping spree. Since then, I've always taken my online security very seriously. With Surfshark, I can use public Wi-Fi safely without having to worry about hackers getting my information. If you're not using a VPN, I highly recommend Surfshark. They've got a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try. I've been using them for a while, and at the moment, they have an amazing deal going on. Check the link in the description below for an exclusive deal and three extra months for free. Okay, this place is so beautiful, so I'm going to head on now to Scotland's highest village. going up 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 we're getting some elevation in now heading towards the highest village I think this might be it we might be arriving highest village in Scotland Five hundred and thirty one feet. We've made it to One Lock Head, Scotland's highest village. Let's go and have a look around the village and see what it's like. One Lock Head, Scotland's highest village, has a long and interesting history. The first permanent settlement appeared in about sixteen eighty, and it was once a major lead mining centre. Lead and other minerals were extracted from the nearby mines as well as some of the world's purest gold. The mines were operational from the 17th century until their closure in the 1950s. It's designated as a conservation village due to its historical and architectural significance. Many of the buildings in the village have been preserved in their original style, giving visitors a glimpse into the past. In addition to its history, Wanlock Head has some fantastic hill walking and the Southern Upland Way passes through the town. The Southern Upland Way is a coast-to-coast -coast walking trail that starts on the west coast of Scotland and finishes 212 miles or 341 kilometres away on the east coast of Scotland. It takes about 14 days to complete. If you've ever walked the Southern Upland Way, please let me know in the comments. I've always been interested to do it. Since there's very low light pollution, Wanlock Head has been designated as a dark sky village, so it's a great location for stargazing. I enjoyed a lovely walk around the village and enjoyed seeing all the miners' cottages and the sheep roaming freely. There's so many sheep roaming around in this village. It's so funny, they're everywhere. Just so much greenery and because it's sort of nestled in between different hills, it's really nice and all the buildings are really cute as well. They're kind of like old miners' cottages. The town of Wanlock Head is known for its history of mining and there is a museum here in the town. So I'm going to head there now and take the tour to try and find out a little bit more about the history of Wanlock Head, Scotland's highest village. The Lead Mining Museum offers two hour tours that provide a comprehensive exploration of the history of lead mining in the region. These tours offer a unique opportunity to gain a deeper understanding of the mining industry in Scotland's highest village. One of the highlights of the tour is the chance to venture inside one of the old lead mines. This experience allows visitors to witness firsthand the conditions in which miners worked and provides a truly amazing experience. In addition to exploring the mines, the tour also includes a visit into the old miners' cottages. This part of the tour offers a glimpse into the living conditions of miners throughout the centuries, providing insight into their daily lives. 
The tour concludes with a visit to the Wanlockhead Library. Despite the demanding and exhausting work miners faced underground, they place great value on education. The library houses an intriguing collection of books, including a translation of the Quran. Photos and videos are not allowed inside the library. If you're planning on visiting Wanlock Head, I highly recommend taking this tour. It offers a unique and informative experience that sheds light on the mining history of the area, allowing you to gain a deeper understanding of the significance of lead mining in Scotland. I've had a great few hours exploring the town of Wanlock Head and I really, really enjoyed the Lead Mining Museum tour. It was really interesting. You can just go in and see the museum. I think it's £6.50 or you can do the two hour tour, which is £19.50 and that includes entrance to the museum and a guided tour into the mines and also the library. The tour guide was really knowledgeable and it was such an exciting experience going into the mines and seeing where all the miners actually worked. You can't go into the mines unless you do the tour. I'm going to cook some lunch now in the van and then I'm going to head to the next town along which is called Lead Hills. It's the second highest town in Scotland. There's a really interesting railway which connects the town of Wanlock Head, the highest village in Scotland, to Lead Hills, the second highest village in Scotland. I'm now in Lead Hills, Scotland's second highest town. I'm also interested to have a look around here because there are a few interesting things to see. And there's also been some competition, I heard, between Wanlock Head and Lead Hills, which town is the highest town in Scotland. And there's been some questions about how that is actually calculated. This town is called Lead Hills, I assume because there's lead in the hills around here. But on the tour earlier in Wanlock Head, the tour guide said that hundreds of years ago, people used to survive on a diet of mainly vegetables and they would eat stew with the vegetables that they'd grown. However, a lot of the vegetables were poisoned with lead because there was lead in the soil where they were growing the vegetables. So I was just thinking, I'm, I'm wondering if that's still the case now, if people in these areas are not growing vegetables because of that, or perhaps they use greenhouses or raised beds instead. So yeah, if anyone knows, please comment below. I'm curious about that. Located one mile from Wanlock Head is the village of Lead Hills, which is home to approximately 300 people. During the mining era, there were many mines in operation between these two villages. Lead Hills is known for its railway line, which remains operational today, made possible by a team of volunteers. This particular railway line spans one kilometre and holds the distinction of being the highest adhesion railway in the UK. All these signals are operated with the levers and it just pulls these wires through the, through the grass and all the way up to that, that furthest signal, which is that one. So what, what does it mean, adhesion railway? Uh, that what? just means that it's sat on the uh, on the track. It doesn't okay. it doesn't have a, a rope to pull it or uh -huh. a rack, you know, like a rack and pin, like a tooth wheel, like some of the very steep ones. Okay. So the, are these still used? These. Um, yeah. Well, they're all well. These two are are in bits, but in theory, everything is a runner. You know, it's yeah. uh, and they put back together. The passenger train comes in this side. At, okay. At night, so you just drive out, and then when you get up to the, the furthest set of points, the, yeah. the third one with the white levers, you need to switch that over, and then it'll come back oh. on the other line. So at the moment, it's set for the main line. So when they put it in tonight, they'll go up there switch that lever and then these are all set to bring it straight back in here. A return journey on the railway takes around 25 minutes and costs £8.50. The scenic route offers visitors an opportunity to experience a memorable train ride through the picturesque landscape of the Lead Hills and Wanlock Head area. I also spent some time exploring the beautiful town of Lead Hills and visited Britain's oldest subscription library for working people. It opened in 1741, 10 years earlier than the Wanlock Head Library. I have arrived here at Lead Hill Cemetery. In the cemetery is the burial place of John Taylor, a man who lived to be 137 years old. The birth records for that time are a bit unreliable, but it is believed that he did live to that age. So I'm going to go and see if I can find the gravestone for John Taylor. So this behind me here is the gravestone of John Taylor, who died when he was 137 years old. It's really unbelievable that he I started working in the mines from the age of 90. In the local museum it said that you can see his walking stick and it's on display there on the wall in the museum. 
I made my way back to Wanlock Head to the Wanlock Head Inn, the highest pub in Scotland. This historic pub has been serving locals and visitors for centuries. The inn offers a cosy atmosphere and a selection of food and drink. If you have a meal in the Wanlock Head Inn, the owner lets you park up for the night in your van in the pub car park. I enjoyed a delicious veggie burger and tried Beaver Town beer for the first time, and it was great. I've had a wonderful time exploring Scotland's highest village and the surrounding areas. Southern Scotland, where I'm from, has so much to offer and I hope this video inspires you to pay this often overlooked region a visit. Thank you for watching today's video and if you'd like to see more of my adventures exploring Scotland, please subscribe to the channel. See you next time!